21. Um, I first wanted to talk a little bit about Larry Sandler, uh, who um, and about the lecture. And the lecture is uh, was set up as a memorial to Larry Sandler, established in 1988 by the colleagues, friends, and students of Dr. Larry Sandler after his untimely death in 1987. The award serves to honor Dr. Sandler for his many contributions to Drosophila genetics and his exceptional dedication to the training of Drosophila biologists, which is seen by his substantial impact uh, on, on the field, uh, on Drosophila research, and also on the fact that many of his students are still prominent members of our uh, community. Over the years, the award has grown to be uh, uh, what, uh, in my mind anyways, is, is the premier award that our community uh, confers upon one of uh, our trainees. And it was a real uh, honor for me to uh, uh, continue this legacy as chair of the committee. Um, sorry, I was trying to... Oh, yeah. So I, I wanted to start by thanking uh, the members of uh, uh, the uh, committee for this year who are absolutely fantastic. It was a real pleasure to work with them. Uh, they were not only uh, professional and helpful and uh, uh, made very insightful contributions, but they're also uh, wonderful human beings. And it was a real joy to work with them. Uh, and these are Alyssa Armstrong uh, from the University of South Carolina, Robert Carrillo uh, from the University of Chicago, and Osefa Gonzalez from the IBN Barcelona. So thank you uh, uh, to uh, um, these colleagues and now friends. Um, we received over 30 applications this year uh, and they were all so good and it was a very hard uh, job to try to whistle them down to a group of finalists which we did. Um, uh, included in them are three that uh, ended up as runners up. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize that because it, the quality of the applications means that uh, these three would have been uh, worthy winners. <laughs> uh, they were they're absolutely outstanding young scientists and, and upcoming superstars in our field. Uh, and I just wanted to mention their names. Uh, Christina Stapon-Wonkol, who uh, did wonderful work in uh, Jean-Paul Vincent's lab at the Crick Institute. Uh, Dr. Jiafu Lee, uh, who worked with, uh, in Nitschen's low lab in Stanford. And Dr. Dylan Shropshire. Uh, who worked in Seth Bodenstein's lab for his PhD in Vanderbilt. They were they are really uh, fantastic scientists and I wish them uh, success. I wanted to take a moment uh, before I introduce the winner to uh, mention uh, that uh, Larry Sandler's, uh, some of his key contributions and a lot of what he's known for were um, work on the, the area of meiotic drive and segregation distortion. And he is one of the first people to use Drosophila to talk about, uh, to, to use Drosophila to study meiotic drive. Um, and he is the first person to describe uh, a genetic locus that's involved in um, meiotic drive uh, called segregation distor distorter. Um, and it's really, I think, poignant and very fitting that the winner of this year's award uh, worked uh, um, as his work constitutes a, a direct continuation uh, of the legacy of Larry Sandler uh, and deals with these uh, the same questions that Larry Sandler works. So I think it's a to me anyways a really kind of beautiful and meaningful uh, uh, a, a example of kind of the circularity of uh, Drosophila research and and how uh, our work uh, rests on the key contributions of those who came before us. So I just wanted to um, introduce now the winner of uh, the Sandler Award for 2021, which is Dr. Ching-Ho Chang, uh, who carried his PhD work uh, in, in the University of Rochester under the supervision of Dr. Amanda Laraquante. Uh, his thesis is titled Meiotic Drive and Rapid Genome Evolution in Drosophila. Uh, Ching-Ho's thesis is absolutely outstanding uh, and I think is the product of um, a decade of uh, passionate interest in the field of chromosome evolution, which he started. Uh, he was born in Taiwan and then he um, went to National Taiwan University uh, as an undergraduate student and really spent the last decade uh, passionately pursuing his interest in chromosome evolution. Uh, what really impressed the committee was the breadth of the work, which uh, uses uh, numerous techniques, genetics, 
computational biology and cytology to study a number of really uh, important fundamental questions about chromosome and chromosome and chromosome evolution. Uh, his work included key insights solving long uh, standing problems um, and questions in the field of the evolution of centromeres, the evolution of the Y chromosome uh, and meiotic drive. He is uh, an, a future an upcoming superstar. Uh, and I know that he is now continuing his interest uh, in uh, chrom and chromosomes in the lab of Harmit Malik, who uh, will talk to you uh, la later this morning. Uh, and it really gives me a tremendous pleasure to introduce uh, his, his talk. And we don't have uh, applause here, so I just uh, uh, generated my own. So. Back to you. Uh, give the microphone to you, Ching Ho. Hi, my name is Ching Ho Chang. I first want to thank Selection Committee for giving me the chance to present my work here. I also want to thank Susie for her help with organizing the meeting and talk. I will present my thesis work from the University of Rochester, which is under the mentorship of Amanda Darong Kwangke. I am currently a postdoc with Mar Hamid Malik at the Free Hatch. If you have any question or suggestion, please feel free to contact me. I am interested in chromosome evolution. Chromosomes are highly diverse within and between species. I study chromosome evolution using cytology, genetic, and genomic approaches. When we talk about the genomes, we often think there are bunches of genes that work together to maintain the life. However, some elements in the genome play their own role and increase their frequency in the genome. They can overreproduce and occupy large proportion of genomes. Mostly, these elements are not benefit to the host, or even are harmful. One classic example of this element is transposons. They are known as genomic parasites, who can proliferate within genome and spread in populations. Therefore, transposons have a huge impact on genome evolution. Another type of selfish DNA is meiotic drivers. One law of Mendelian inheritance is the equal segregation of chromosomes to half of gametes. But there can be cheaters that arise subvert the fairness of meiosis and bias their transmission to more than 50% of gametes. These cheaters are called meiotic drivers and they can spread in population. Meiotic drivers can occur in both sexes. In the male, it often acts as a sperm killer that kills sperm without themselves. On the other hand, when it occurs in female, it segregates toward the oocyte instead of the polar bodies. In both cases, the drivers can increase their frequency in the offspring despite having the cost to the host, say, reducing the fertilities. These kinds of drivers have been found in many organisms, from plants, fungi, to animals. In short, these selfish DNAs create conflict within genome. A selfish DNA cheat, they increase their frequency, but in turn induce host genome to evolve mechanism to suppress cheating. The selfish DNA then evolve around this host mechanism and so on and so forth. In consequence, this conflict trigger evolution unrest that drive rapid genome evolution. My thesis was on three discrete but related topics about how genetic conflict like meiotic drive can shape genome evolution. I will look at how inversions influence a driver and also study regions enriched for genetic conflict, including centromere and Y chromosomes. I will focus on the first two topics in this talk. First, I will talk about a well-studied meiotic drive system in the Menogaster. Meiotic driver can increase their frequency in the genome despite its harmful effect. Therefore, Larry Sander, who in this lecture is honored for, proposed the idea that 
Meiotic drive is an evolution force in his paper. He and other colleagues find that there is non-random disjunction when an individual is heterozygous for structurally different chromosomes. He does suggest that meiotic driver with structure variation can overcome its harmful effect and the increased frequency in the population. Then in 1959, Larry Center also finds segregation disorder SD, which is a second chromosome meiotic driver in the menogaster. When a female fly is heterologous for this chromosome, it will transfer both SD and wild type chromosome to the next generation, as Mandian rule predict. However, if a male is heterologous for SD chromosome, SD will kill the sperm with a wild type chromosome and only transfer itself to the next generation. It has been known that the driver is a duplication of a protein coding gene rank gap on 2L. And its target is a repeat sequence responder on 2R. The SD rank gap will kill the sperm with responder repeat. However, responder is still found on most wild type chromosomes, and the molecular mechanism how the driver kills sperm with responder is still unclear. In addition to the driver and target, there are also other unidentified factors that will affect drive strength. On SD chromosome, people find there are three genetic loci that can increase drive strength. Moreover, SD chromosome can acquire immersion to enhance the linkage between the driver and these enhancers. In addition to the enhancers, there are also some suppressors can suppress drive. These suppressors will find on X, second, and third chromosomes. SD is rarely found, but widely distributed. It has been found in 1 to 8% frequency worldwide, and it's often segregating with inversions. Interestingly, they link with different inversions in different populations. For example, in Africa, an immersion to our mom was recently arose and quickly fixed on the SD chromosome. These African ST chromosomes are known to be strong drivers. I predicted that I would see similar patterns in other populations. Therefore, I focused on U.S. population and collected new ST chromosomes from the natural populations. Since ST is usually at low frequency, I first identified ST chromosomes using public available sequencing data from DGRP and the totally coded ASD chromosome from about 200 individuals. Using polythene squash and the PCR validation, I surprisingly find there are four different inversions segregating with SD chromosome in DGRP from Raleigh, North Carolina. Look at these SD chromosomes in detail. Most SD chromosomes in the U.S. carry inversions. Among all SD chromosomes with inversions, I find a shared inversion marked in blue. In addition, they also carry multiple polymorphic inversions, showing green. These green inversions are only found on SD chromosomes. Moreover, green inversions often carry recessive diesel and thus cannot spread to wild type chromosomes. Since this chromosome might carry different enhancers, we are wondering what is the differences between these SD chromosomes. I have two hypotheses. Since these SD chromosomes might carry different inhibitors, they might have different drive strengths. Therefore, I extracted all SD chromosomes to the same genetic background without suppressors and test their drive strengths. Alternatively, SD with different inversions might interact with suppressors differently. So I test the effect of a strong suppressor with different SD chromosomes. This suppressor was extracted from the same population, and I also mapped these suppressors to a single locus on X chromosome. To quantify drive strengths, I use K values which is the proportion of offspring with SD chromosome as my indicator. In general, K will be 
equal to 0.5 based on maintenance error. When a driver can kill most wildtype chromosome, K will be over 0.9, and when the driver is pressed, K will be between these two values. I then compare the drive strength with and without the x link suppressor in the same genetic background. Without the suppressor, this SD chromosome can drive almost perfectly. While after introducing the suppressor in this genotype, I can see the drive is totally disappear. However, this suppressor cannot work on ST chromosome from Africa. They still drive perfectly with the suppressor. Surprisingly, I find that the suppressor also works differently within the population. Notably, also these ST chromosomes and the suppressor are from the same population. I can see the complex interaction between SD chromosomes and the suppressor. Based on my result, I propose a model to explain how inversions arose on and hitchhike with SD chromosomes. Also, they carry recessive diesels. First, a suppressor evolved to suppress SD. In the response, SD chromosome might recruit enhancers to suppress the suppressor. After the structure mutation on ST chromosomes, which ties the linkage between the driver and the enhancers, can increase their frequency. This study, I also find multiple suppressors and enhancers in my population surveys. Therefore, this unrecessive between suppressors and the enhancers might be able to maintain the polymorphic inversions on ST chromosomes. In the first story, I told you that the structural variation, such as inversions, can hitchhike with meiotic drivers and increase its frequency in the population. However, sometimes structural variation itself can be a driver as well. The second project that I'm going to talk about today is the central mirror evolution. This is a famous example that female meiotic drive can shape genome evolution. This part is a summary of several studies, and I will present part of the result for the sake of time. Centromeres are important cell structure essential for the mitosis and the meiosis. It's conserved in all eukaryotes. However, centromeric sequences are rapidly evolving across species. And the size of centromeric DNA can range from a 100 base pair to up to a mega base pair. To explain the rapid evolution of centromeric DNA, people propose that female meiotic drive play some roles. As Cottage finds, some structural mutation in the centromere and the pericentromere might gain preference to transfer to X and quickly fix in the population. Based on this hypothesis, we will predict that both the centromeres and the pericentromeres will be rapidly evolving. We would like to test this hypothesis in Drosophila, but it requires knowing where centromeres are. However, genome assembly in this region of genomes are generally poor. Therefore, I developed a new method to improve assemble qualities, which I will not talk about today. Moreover, because centromeres are defined epigenetically and we cannot know that we are looking at a centromere just based on DNA sequences alone, we then cooperate with Barbara Maloney's lab from Yukon. They performed CHIP using a centromeric protein called SEMPA to directly detect the centromeric sequences. Then we combine this chip seq data with my new assembly to discover the centromeres of the Menagaster. Make the long story short, what we learned was that the Menagaster centromeres correspond to islands of complex DNA flanked by simple tendon repeats. For example, the x link centromeric island is mostly composed of transposon sequences, showing red and the surrounding by the simple repeat AAGAG showing blue here. We can map the TRIP-seq data to the genome and find this island is indeed centromere of X chromosome. 
We also assemble and identify Centromeric islands from other chromosomes, which were not present in the previous assemblies. To validate our results cytologically, we use oligopants, which is developed from Tim Wu's lab to detect Centromeric islands. We design oligos that specifically bind to the Centromeric sequence and stain the fiber with both the oligos and the centromeric protein, SEMPA. Consistent with our result, we can find most of SEMPA signal are co-localized with the centromeric island. We then compare the sequences of centromeric island across chromosomes. I use colors to indicate the density of each sequence in the centromeric regions including simple repeat and transposons, and find most sequences are not conserved across centromeres. For example, the dica repeat is only found on the third chromosome centromere. But interestingly, you can see there is one transposon shared across all centromeres. This transposon is also enriched in centromeres compared to other regions of genome. So why? It is possible that these transposome parotatized centromeres were in contrast. The host genome domesticated the transposome for their centromere function. Our lab and the collaborators are currently working on these ideas, and they have three posters about the new progress. Now that we know where the monogaster centromeres are, and we can ask if these sequences are rapidly evolving by looking at their close relatives in the similar clade, these species only diverge recently and their sequences are over 90% identical. They can even produce hybrids. First, we need to build better genome assembly to address the question. Therefore, we start a collaboration with JJ Emerson and his postdoc. Mohu Chakraborty from UC Irvine to improve the assembly of three sister species of Menogaster. To overcome the difficulty to assemble repetitive sequence, we sequence about 100x coverage of PEG biodome reads for the normal assemblies. Our assemblies are great. We can compare our assembly with the second best Drosophila assembly in the similars at that point. Here we can look at all these gaps showing red in the previous assembly. And the fact that we closed almost all gaps in the assembly. We also corrected misassemblies in the previous genomes. In addition, we assembled 10 megabits more pericentric region than the previous genomes. The other two assemblies I didn't mention here are as good as our seamless assembly. We then compare the genomic structure between this species and the monogaster. For example, we find that they are pretty collinear in the second chromosome euchromatic region across species. This pattern is true across all chromosome euchromatic region. And we also find a large 3R immersion that people described before using cytology. However, when we look at the pericentromeric regions, there are tons of rearrangement. Indeed, over 90% of detected rearrangement are located in pericentromeric regions, consistent with centromere drive hypothesis. But these are not centromeres. How about the centromeres? Using ChIP-seq from previous studies, we then find that the sameness has complex repeat, which is the repeat with more than 100 base pair unit in their centromeres. This is totally different from the monogaster, which has the simple centromeric repeat. This complex centromeric repeat are not found in the monogaster or other outgroup species. Moreover, I can find one of these centromeric repeat is conserved across species in the simian clay using in situ hybridization. They are all located on second, third, and X chromosomes. This is surprisingly given that the pericentric regions are rapidly turnover between species. So how about 
G2 JK3 transposons using the similar method that we use in the Menogast. I can also identify complex ions in the Simulans. For example, we can look at one of the central mirror in the Simulans, which is surrounded by Dodaka repeat and include these 500 base pair repeat sequences. Interestingly, we also find Jockey 3 transposons in the central mirror of the Simulans. A poster in the Laurent Quante step, Cecile will have to talk about this. You can go there to learn more about this if you are interested in the project. In short, we see major differences in sequences between Menogaster and the species of the Simulans clade on both central mirrors and pericentral mirrors. My observation is consistent with female mount drive hypothesis. But more work is needed to identify the faults, including meiotic drive and the purified sedation, shaping central mirror evolution in this clade. For the last part of my talk, I want to talk a small story about Y chromosome. Y chromosome is obviously the most understudied chromosome in the fly. Y chromosome is known to have many repeat and these repeats are rapidly evolving. Since Y chromosomes are also rapidly evolving, we want to know can male meiotic drive share their evolution. Indeed, we already have evidence that some y link repeats are functional and shaped by genetic conflict. x link drivers, which can kill sperm with Y chromosomes, are found in many species. There are even 18 reported cases of X-linked drivers in Drosophila species. In general, people suggest that X-linked driver, which kill Y-bearing sperm, will appear selfishly. In response, Y chromosome will acquire repeat to expandish the suppression of the X-linked driver, and the X chromosome will duplicate its driver to increase the drive strength. This unthreads between X and Y chromosome will lead the expansion of Y link repeat. We are wondering whether we can see the similar phenomena using our improved similar assemblies. Indeed, we find that the expansion of the gene on both X and Y chromosomes. This gene is about five copies on X chromosome and have many copies on Y chromosomes. In addition, they are both protein coding and have test-specific expression. We also find their protein sequences are under positive sedation on both sex chromosomes. I will have the other talk on this project, and please come to my talk if you want to learn more. To conclude, also my project seems described at the first look. I surprisingly find that they deliver one central idea that Genetic conflict, particularly meiotic drive, might play important roles in genome evolution. I find that structural variation arose on SD chromosomes, also they are harmful for individual. I find centromere rapidly diverge between species, which is consistent with centromere drive hypothesis. Moreover, I detect the expansion of a gene on Y chromosomes in the similar clade. My observation provides a strong support for Larry Sanders' idea that meiotic drive has significant effect on chromosome evolution. I want to acknowledge three great female flight genetics in my life. Zhao Di and Hui Ri were my mentors in Taiwan and introduced me to flight genetics. I came to the U.S. and joined Amanda Long Contest Lab when she just started her lab. I cannot appreciate more on the support Amanda gave to me and her kindness to let me develop my own project in her lab. I also want to thank the support from my current postdoc advisor, Hami Malik, during the pandemic. I want to emphasize the support from my families, including my parents and my brothers, and I feel so lucky to have them. I want to thank Flybase, NCBI, and the Bloomington Staff Center. Without them, I couldn't finish my dissertation. 
I also acknowledge the support of GSA Society. I have learned a lot from the club meeting every year. I also want to thank my funding resources. I would like to acknowledge my lab mates, especially to undergraduate Daniel and Taylor for their help with flywork. I want to thank my collaborators for two different projects, particularly Baba Maloney and JJ Emerson. I want to thank my CSS committee for their guidance on my projects. Finally, I want to thank my friends during the graduate school and the members in the Malik lab, including those I didn't list here. Lastly, many people here have their own talk or posters in the meeting. Please visit their presentation if you are interested in our work. Thank you for your attention and I am happy to take any questions. All right, Ching Hao. Oh. Hi. <laughs> There's uh, your applause. That was really fantastic. There's about 13 minutes of applause now, so we can just sit here and uh, maybe, maybe I want to let it go for, for 13 minutes actually and just uh, move on to the Q&A. Uh, we, we got a few questions. Uh, that was really, really a wonderful talk. Uh, uh, and uh, we got a couple of questions. So um, I, I might have an invader here. Um, so one question we have uh, is, uh, is there something special about jockey that it would be enriched at, CNE, at CENs, or uh, is this more because of stochastic events and evolution? This is from, this question is from Brian Calvi. So good question. So we think about that, the jockey might have some promoter which can express RNA and it has been found that RNA transcription plays some role in expansion expandish central mirrors. Okay. Um, there's another question from Wu Ming Dang asking uh, if the mechanism of killing is understood. Um, for the SD? Or? Um, I think that that's what, they, that's what they're implying. So it has been known that as the driver is a duplication of a RAN gap, which is RAN GTPS, and this duplication might disrupt the nuclear input system and expo system. But it, it's unknown why they only kill the sperm with responder repeat. And our lab, I mean, the Wuhan test lab is still in studying this. They think there might be. Um, because the this response repeat will produce some small RNA, and I think there is one graduate student have ha, has a poster about it. Okay, um, I waiting for more question. I had one one I have one last question. So do do you think I'm going to ask you to speculate here? Do you think this this central revolution is is a main driver of speciation? Is that uh, if you were to guess? Do you think this is a conserved general mechanism of speciation? I think there are many mechanisms which can cause speciation and the central mirror is different one of strong candidate. We can, I mean, see if when there is heterologous for central meric region, there will be defect for the epigenetically, they might sudden some gene. But I'm not sure which mechanism, for example, sperm metagenesis also have a lot of defects. So I I have no clue which mechanism might contribute more. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a very good diplomatic answer. I like it. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Chingho is going to hang around. Uh, if anybody wants to um, hit him up during the 